Hi everybody, it's Gemma, welcome back to Pampered Wolf. Today we are gonna be testing out the brand new concealer release from The Ordinary. I've got a couple of shades of this, 1.1N and 1.2N. I do have fair skin, so hopefully these are gonna be okay for me. We are seriously gonna put this through its paces. I'm gonna apply this with fingertips, with a brush, with a sponge. We're gonna see whether this layers well, whether it's buildable, does it crease, what sort of finish is it? Is it gonna be long wearing? Does it need powdering? I'm gonna find out all those things today in a full blown wear test. So if you're interested in getting all of those answers, then do stick around. If you are new here, hi, my name is Gemma. I upload two to three videos here on YouTube every single week. And I'm also on Instagram. If you fancy checking me out over there, it's at Pampered Wolf, all lowercase, no spaces. I would seriously appreciate it if after this video, you've liked what you've seen. You come and join the Pampered Wolf pack by clicking that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Let me show you the swatches of both of these concealers and we'll get some on. So as you can see, these are a little bit too fair for me, which is practically unheard of. I always thought my skin was that fair. It was practically transparent, but hey, it would seem not. So I've gone for 1.1N and 1.2N. You can see the difference with the foundation shade that I've got on today, which is the Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. There will be a full blown wear test of this coming soon, so do stay tuned for that. So you'll see on the left is 1.1N, on the right is 1.2N, and then we've got the Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation in the shade 140, which is porcelain. So I'm definitely going to be using the deeper of the two shades that I bought today because, I mean, they are very, very fair. So I will be using 1.2N today, even though there's only a slight difference between 1.1N and 1.2N. So I'm going to squeeze a tiny bit of the 1.2N out on the back of my hand. I quite like the squeezy tube. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's it's definitely not luxurious, but I mean, it will travel well. It doesn't squeeze too much of the product out on your hand, which is a really good job because I don't think you'll need very much of this product for a really good coverage. It's quite a stiff consistency. It's definitely holding its form on the back of my hand, but it's not as thick and sturdy as the It's Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. If I move this around on my finger, let me show you that way. This is definitely not gloopy. It's a very thick, creamy consistency. So let me just remove a little bit of that. And I'm just gonna take a little bit on my finger and just start to pad that underneath my eye where I need it. So the finish of this, I believe, is quite a matte finish, but more of a soft matte finish than a flat matte finish. So the coverage is definitely there. I mean, I feel like I need a little bit more coverage. Let's pop a little bit at this corner. So finger application definitely works well. This isn't one of those products you've got to warm up with your fingertips before you apply it. And it looks really, really nice. It definitely looks nice. It doesn't look patchy at all. I'm gonna withhold judgment. Let's try it with a brush on the other side and then I'm gonna add a little bit more and smooth it out with a sponge on this side. So I've taken a little bit on my concealer brush and I'm just going to stipple this into the skin where I need it. So it's blending out really nicely, but it's definitely not one of those formulas that you can tell is really, really expensive. I mean, this isn't expensive, it's really inexpensive, but it's not tricked me into thinking that this is a luxurious product. Even though I've only just started applying it, it's already sat in some very fine lines 
underneath here. If I zoom you in a little bit, you may be able to see that. And I'm hardly applying any product whatsoever. So that's just something to bear in mind. Let's see if we can apply a little bit more product on this side with a blending sponge, just to see if that's a little bit better and gets rid of that problem. That's already smoother. So for me, a sponge application is gives you a better and a smoother finish. So I'm just gonna go over the side that I applied with the brush and just smooth that out with a blending sponge. Let me see if I can build this side up a little bit more because I definitely need more coverage. I have been very, very careful not to apply too much. I mean, you can always apply more, but it's very difficult to take it away once it's on the skin. So just going to apply a little bit more over here where I need it and then blend it away with the sponge. Now that's more like it. That is more like it. That is the hallelujah moment right there. There we go. I'm going to do the same on the other side just to even everything up a little bit. So I think that looks really nice. It's definitely not flat matte. It doesn't look like it's going to be a drying concealer, but it also doesn't look like it's going to be a hydrating concealer either. It has clung to a dry area around here and I do have a little bit of dryness just underneath this eye as well which it's also clung to. If you have seriously dry under eyes this probably won't be for you. At the moment every concealer, even my ultimate favourite concealer, is clinging to those areas so that's not detrimental to this specific concealer, it's just that I have quite a lot of dry patches at this moment in time but if you do have that all the time then this is probably not going to be for you. I'm really really happy with how that's applied. I'm going to zoom you in so that you get a really up close and personal view of my under eyes at the moment pre-powder. Now I'm definitely going to have to powder this in place as you saw before it had already started collecting in my fine lines so I wouldn't have thought this is one of those concealers that doesn't need powdering in place. By all means, if you've tried this already and you don't powder this in place and it doesn't move for you, please let everybody know in the comments section. Let me grab my favourite powder and uh, we'll set this in place. So we've definitely already answered what sort of finish this has. At the moment, this has more of a satin matte finish for me. It may dry down and that may change. We will see and I will update you a little bit later on if that is the case. This is definitely buildable. Does it crease? Yes, it does. But if you apply it sparingly and you apply it with a sponge, that creasing is a lot less. Does it need powdering in place? Well, I would say so because I don't like to be checking in the mirror every minute of the day to see whether my concealer is creased. So I'm just going to go over the concealer a little bit just to smooth it out and then I'm going to apply a bit of the Pat McGrath powder over the top. Look at that. Okay. So The Ordinary definitely aren't playing around with this concealer. This is a really well thought out formula. And although I don't feel like this is going to be for everybody, not everybody's going to like the finish on this, not everybody's going to like the fact that I do believe this creases, but it is buildable. It looks really nice and smooth underneath my eye and... Um, I'm quite impressed at this moment in time. So let me just zoom you in on my under eyes so that you can see what my under eyes look like now the concealer's been set in place. And I'm gonna pop off now. I'm gonna go and put the rest of my products on. I'm gonna get on with my day. I will see you later on for a check-in so that we can see how long this wears for, how well it's worn throughout the day. I'll see you all in a bit. 
Welcome back to the check-in. It's been around about eight hours since I first applied the concealer underneath my eyes. I apologize for not applying it anywhere else on my skin earlier on. I really should have done that to show you that you can conceal blemishes or anything else that you'd like to hide on your skin. This definitely will do that because of the consistency and the finish of this product. Because it's a matte finish, it will be great at concealing blemishes. It's not one of those illuminating concealers that will actually draw attention to the area that you're wanting to conceal. So this will be a great concealer for hiding any blemishes or pigmentation on your skin. The consistency and the overall finish of this concealer feels inexpensive and I don't mean that to sound negative. It's not a negative, this is an inexpensive product but they've not tried to sugarcoat it and make it feel more expensive than it actually is if you get what I mean. I've tried inexpensive concealers before that have actually felt more expensive than they are. This isn't one of those concealers. You're getting what you pay for. I think that the Pat McGrath setting powder has considerably helped how this concealer has looked underneath my eyes today. It smoothed everything, it blurred everything. Yesterday when I tried this concealer, and I really should have taken a picture of this for you, I used the RCMA No Colour Powder, which is a great setting powder. It's completely inexpensive, it's absolutely fantastic, and I used to use that powder all the time for setting underneath my eyes. This concealer did not look as nice yesterday as it has done today. And by the end of the day, it looked a little bit chalky and a little bit dry. So it definitely matters what setting powder you apply over the top of this to how it's going to look later on in the day. So this did settle into my fine lines. This definitely does need setting. Let me zoom you in and show you underneath my eyes now, because even though I've set this in place, this has still moved. Now, obviously I'm not gonna pull my skin down and show everybody that's walking past me in the street the creases. And you can really only see the creases when I do that. So let me just show you. You can see the creasing there. It's not really a big deal. Like I said, when I'm not pulling that skin down, the concealer looks absolutely fine. Or, I mean, you can see a little bit of the creasing, but you have to get very, very close. I'm being super picky. This concealer gives decent coverage without looking or feeling heavy underneath the eyes. You do have to be very, very careful how much you apply though. Little is best. You apply too much, you're going to be in a bit of a mess. So definitely, definitely apply this sparingly if you are gonna give this a go. This also isn't a hydrating formula. If you like a hydrating formula underneath the eye, then this is not gonna be for you. I don't find this to be a drying formula though, so it's not one of those that's going to make your under eyes look drier than they actually are, but it's definitely something worth mentioning. I find that the more this has dried down, the more matte it's looked. So rather than being a satin matte finish, this is more of a soft matte finish. It's completely touch dry. It's not stayed tacky at all. But the longer it's been on, the chalkier it tends to look. So is this the best concealer ever? No, it's not but it is a nice concealer and I'm definitely going to experiment with this, applying it in different ways, using different setting powders to set this in place because it's a super inexpensive concealer and it's high coverage. So is it worth going out and buying and trying for yourself? Absolutely. This is £4.90. It comes in 21 different shades. So, I mean, you are going to find a shade that suits you here. My shade, the one that I've got on today is 1.2N. Possibly slightly too pale for me, but I mean, it's doable. So I am going to take a few products that I've been trying out recently and drop them on my mum's doorstep so she can try them out as well. As soon as she's given me her opinion on those products, I will let you know what she thinks about them. 
I've got a feeling that she's either going to love this one or hate it. I don't think there'll be an in-between, so um, stay tuned for her opinion on that. I really hope you found this video helpful. Do let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. Also, if you've tried this concealer already, if you love it, if you hate it, do let everybody know your experience with the product because your experience and your feelings are invaluable. Pass on the knowledge. How did you apply it? What did you find worked for you? How do you think is the best way to apply this to avoid any creasing further on through the day? Do let everybody know your experiences and hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone!